Welcome to North Georgia News Now. I'm Jimmy Harper. Coming up today in local news, the Whitfield County Board of Education voted to approve a $5 million contract for new athletic facilities. This will take place at Cahulla Creek High School. A Dalton High School alumna has been awarded with a prestigious study abroad scholarship opportunity. Also, three Dalton Police Department employees have been recognized for their heroism after rescuing a drowning toddler. And the community is mourning the loss of a football legend and local coach, Chip Kill. In state news, the Georgia Department of Corrections is under fire for allegedly breaching a health care contract. Later, we'll meet the Humane Society of Northwest Georgia's Pet of the Week. And Shane Franks will be here to present the WDNN Community Calendar. But first, here is your local weather. Today's local weather is brought to you by Built Well Bank. Welcome back to your local news. Whitfield County students can expect to see some big changes to their athletic facilities for the 24-25 school year. The Board of Education vo voted 5-0 to zero during a recent meeting to approve a $5.8 million contract with Tyson & Associates Construction. That's a Ringo-based company. The construction will include the combining of Cahulla Creek High School's baseball and softball fields. Whitfield County Schools Chief Operations Officer Mark Gibson said the decision to combine the baseball and softball fields is a cost-cutting measure. Construction is set to begin soon and should be complete by the 2025 calendar year. In addition, Cahulla Creek will get a soccer field house and renovations to the baseball press box and concessions area and the school's tennis courts. Cahulla Creek's press box may not be 100% complete, but it will be operational, and they'll be able to play, have concessions, dugouts, and everything else, said Gibson. It will just require a certain amount of patience from some folks, but not a terrible amount. Whitfield County School Board also voted to approve construction projects for the fields at Southeast Whitfield High School and Northwest Whitfield High School. The upgrades will include new fencing, dugouts, scoreboards, and artificial turf. According to Gibson, the renovations are long overdue. Facility upgrades and renovations were desperately needed because they've not been done in quite some time, and it was showing. There's also the maintenance cost that we won't have due to having a combined field, he said. Gibson added that combining the fields will help reduce the amount of work needed to prepare the field before games, including maintaining and caring for the natural turf. Construction of the fields at both Southwest or Southeast Whitfield High School and Northwest Whitfield High School has already begun. A Dalton High School alumna has been awarded with a prestigious scholarship. For a press release from the Dalton Public School System, Sadie Cowan has been awarded the Fulbright Scholarship for the year 2024. Established in 1946, the Fulbright program provides approximately 8,000 grants annually. The cultural exchange program issues scholarships to graduating seniors, graduate students, young professionals, and artists to research, study, or teach abroad. Cowan has an extensive list of accomplishments that made her an ideal candidate for Fulbright. She graduated in 2019 with honors as a full international baccalaureate diploma candidate. During her time at Dalton High School, she was a Georgia scholar, an AP scholar with honors, and a member of both the National Honor Society and the National Beta Club. She was also nominated for the Georgia Governor's Honors in Math, received the Sidney Gillen Student Athlete Scholarship, and was a finalist for the Pros Scholarship to Boston University, where she earned a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology and a Master of Public Health. The Fulbright Scholarship Program will now take Cowan to New Delhi, India, where she will conduct social epidemiology research with a focus on tuberculosis and undernutrition. 
India actually has the highest rate of TB cases in the world due to a lack of financial resources, malnutrition, poor living conditions, and other contributing factors. Cowan's research will aim to investigate the underutilization of India's main tuberculosis response program and explore how existing policies can be used to eradicate the disease. Dalton Public Schools said Cowan's Fulbright Scholarship is a proud moment for Dalton High School. DHS congratulates Sadie on her remarkable accomplishment and looks forward to celebrating the continued achievements of its students and alumni, the school system said in a press release. Several members of the police personnel have been honored for their off-duty heroism. Three Dalton Police Department employees came to the rescue of a three-year-old child who police say wandered into a gated swimming pool during a private Easter celebration last year. The toddler removed his clothing and shoes and jumped into the pool to swim, but was unable to. Bruce Franks, a former Dalton Police Department officer who is now a police officer at Georgia Northwestern Technical College, saw the boy and jumped into the pool to pull him out. Matthew Kumnick, a detective at the Dalton Police Department, attempted to administer CPR. However, the boy did not have a pulse and was not breathing. Bernice Kumnick, a property and evidence technician for the Dalton Police Department, was also in attendance at the event, and she worked to gather the other children and remove them from the scene. Detective Kumnick continued working until medical assistance arrived. After a few minutes, the child began to cry. Fortunately, the three-year-old was able to make a full recovery. All three officers were honored for their heroic efforts at Tuesday's Dalton Public Safety Commission meeting. Detective Kumnick and Officer Franks were presented the Dalton Police Department's Life Saving Award, which is presented to employees or community members for taking actions which directly result in the preservation of human life. Bernice Kumnick was given a letter of commendation for her actions in keeping the scene clear and calm. It's such a blessing for these folks to be nearby and that there's a good outcome of all of this. The young man was able to recover and is doing well, said Chief Assistant Chief Chris Crossan. I thank them for their actions and their willingness to step into a situation that was life-threatening, not only for the child, but if you think about jumping into a cold pool in March, that sort of thing could be bad for everybody, he added. Well, former All-American lineman Curtis Cliff Chip Kell, better known as Coach Kell, has passed away at the age of 75. Kell graduated from Avondale High School before playing center and guard for the Tennessee Volunteers. He was a three-time All-Southeastern Conference player and a two-time winner of the Jacobs Trophy for being the top blocker in the SEC. In 1971, Kell was drafted by the San Diego Chargers. He also spent time playing for the Canadian Football League's Edmonton Eskimos. He was elected to the College Football Hall of Fame in 2006 and is a member of the Tennessee and Georgia State Halls of Fame the University of Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame, the Greater Knoxville Sports Hall of Fame, and an SEC sports legend. Because of his time as a high school player, he was part of the inaugural class of Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame when it was created back in 2022. After his playing days, Kell served as a head coach at various schools in Calhoun, Union County, and Hickson in Tennessee. Kell's last job before entering retirement was at Southwest Whitfield High School, where he spent four seasons as the head coach. His first three teams finished one and nine on the season before his 2005 squad went four and six. In 2014, Kell published an autobiography titled All in God's Glory, Adoption to the College Football Hall of Fame. Kell said, I've always felt like I did things with the right heart, especially when it came to helping kids and coaching kids. Kell said when asked about coaching, Kell had not, uh, Kell had a great impact on the lives of the students he interacted with. He was well loved, respected by the community, and he will be deeply missed. Our condolences go out to his family and his friends. And now it's time to get a look at the Humane Society of Northwest Georgia's Pet of the Week. The Humane Society of Northwest Georgia currently has many puppies that are in need of a forever home. 
The available puppies vary in terms of breed, size, and age range, including anywhere from six to nine months. Come visit these adorable puppies and others during adoption hours on Fridays from 3 to 5 p.m. and on Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The Humane Society of Northwest Georgia is located at 1210, that's 1210 Veterans Drive in Dalton. If you'd like to add a cat or a dog to your family, you can visit hsnwga.org to apply. Well, when we return, I'll share some state news. The Georgia Department of Corrections has granted a $2.4 billion health care contract for the prison system to a new company without the competitive bidding process mandated by state law, according to a lawsuit filed by the current contractor. WellPath, a Nashville-based firm that provided health care services for the GDC since 2021, claims it was caught off guard by the extreme violence in Georgia prisons, which led to trauma costs far exceeding those in other states where it operates. The lawsuit introduces another complication for the GDC, alleging the department acted in an unprecedented manner by awarding the health care contract to Virginia-based Centurion Health in April. WellPath had notified the GDC in June of its intent to opt out of its contract on June 30th, 2024, only three years into a nine-year agreement. However, the lawsuit claims that ongoing discussions for new pricing abruptly ended when the GDC secretly made a deal with Centurion. There was no public notice, no request for proposals, no written evaluation criteria, no evaluation team, no evaluation, and no statement of the basis for the decision WellPath asserts in its complaint. The lawsuit also sheds light on the severe violence inside Georgia's prisons over the past four years. According to the complaint, the state's descriptions of prison conditions in 2021 were grossly understated, leading bidders to miscalculate their proposals. WellPath asserts it performed its duties skillfully and without any noted deficiencies under incredibly trying conditions. Despite ongoing negotiations, the GDC unexpectedly awarded the contract to Centurion, allegedly bypassing the Georgia State Purchasing Act. The lawsuit also alleges that the GDC and Centurion have proceeded with their agreement unlawfully, interfering with WellPath's employees and network providers. The new contract designates Centurion as the prison health care provider starting on July 1st. Well, when we return, Shane Franks will share WDNN's community calendar. But first, here are the obituaries. Welcome back. It's time for WDNN's community calendar. Here are some things that are going on in your neck of the woods. The Creative Arts Guild, located at 520 West Wall Street, will host a workshop titled Expressive Painting in Acrylics with Bradley Wilson on Friday, June 12th from 1230 to 330 p.m. In this course, students will practice the methods of expressive acrylic painting while exploring a variety of subject matter and receiving instructor feedback on work. Sorry, this class is not suitable for beginners. Approaching painting as uh, play will be emphasized while also focusing on solid technique and other important skills. 
Students will also be given monthly challenges for painting projects to work on at home and uh, bring in for critique. Students must provide their own materials. You must register for each workshop you would, uh, that you would like to attend, and uh, it's $40 per workshop. For more information, visit www.creativeartsguild.org, the Guild's Facebook page, or call 706-278-0168 today. The Creative Arts Guild Gallery opening and artist reception for June will be Friday, June 7th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. at 520 West Wall Street in Dalton. The event is family friendly and open to all with free admission. It's the first opportunity for the public to view and purchase from their latest exhibits and speak with artist curators. Refreshments will also be available and uh, as well an arts focused activity for kids in attendance. Their galleries are also open to the public with free admission during our normal operating hours. For more information, call 706-278-0168 or visit www.creativeartsguild.org. T.G. Shepard and Kelly Lang will be performing at the GEM Theater on Saturday, June 15th at 7 p.m., located at 114 North Wall Street. With 21 number one hit singles and ranked among the top 100 country artists, singer-songwriter T.G. Shepard has a passion for music that makes his concerts a must-see experience. After a brief stint as a record uh, promoter, Shepard returned to his performing uh, roots in the 1970s and released his first hit, Devil in the Bottle. Since the 1990s, Shepard has been touring, bringing his unceasing energy and talent to the stage. Joining him on stage will be his wife, singer and songwriter Kelly Lang. Known for her extensive uh, career in music, writing songs for artists including Lori Morgan, Ricky Skaggs, and more. Tickets are $45 to $50 with reserve seating recommended. To purchase tickets or to learn more, go to CalhounGMTheater.org uh, today. If you would like to submit information on your event for North Georgia's News Now uh, community calendar, send us an email at info at WDNNTV.com. And that's it for this edition of North Georgia News Now. Be sure to visit us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. As always, thanks for watching. God bless.